guys, so in this video I want to take you through a little voice leading exercise where we use some chord tensions. This will bring together a few really important jazz piano concepts um, and ideas such as creating voicings, using available tensions and of course voice leading. And we'll see that actually creating really nice, smooth and jazzy chordal arrangements only requires you to follow just a few simple rules and is kind of formulaic. Once you know the rules, um, you don't really have too much choice. You just follow the rules and it kind of builds itself. So first let's start with available tensions. Each chord type has particular tensions that can be used over it. Now an easy way to remember this is that for major and minor seven chords, the tensions that you can play are a whole step above the triad. So for example, over a C major seven chord, the triad is C major. The triad a whole step higher is D major. So you can use the D major triad over a C major seven chord. Now this gives you a D, F sharp and A, which is the ninth, sharp 11th and 13th which are the uh, available tensions that you can use over a major seven chord. Minor seven chord, same idea. Let's take a C minor seven. The triad is C minor. The triad a whole step above is a D minor. So we can use a D minor triad over a C minor seven chord. That gives us the notes D, F, A which is the 9, 11, and 13, which are the available tensions you can use over a minor 7 chord. Now, dominant 7 chords, because they're already quite dissonant, um, because they've got that tritone interval between their 3rd and their 7th, in terms of their available tensions, you can use everything except for the natural 11 and the major 7. So that means over a G7 chord, you can use A flat, A, A sharp. You can't use C because that's the uh, natural 11th, but you can use C sharp. You can use E flat and E, and you can't use F sharp because that's the major 7. So you could have a G7, flat 9, sharp 11th, flat 13 chord, for example. A little bit dissonant, but again, it's a dominant chord, so that's okay, we're just creating some tension. So you can use only these particular tensions over these chord types. Next, when creating chord voicings, there are also a few rules that you need to follow. First, you must include the guide tones of the chord, that is the third and the seventh, in all your voicings. Second, the root, fifth, and available tensions of the chord are all optional. You can use them, but you can also omit them. Third, if you're not playing with a bass player, then the chord will sound stronger if it has either the root or the fifth at the bottom as your bass note. So this isn't strictly a, um, a rule, it's more of a guideline, but if you stick to it, you'll generally create stronger sounding chords. And finally, four, we want to avoid repeating or doubling notes. So if you've already got, you know, a seventh in your left hand, don't play it again in your right hand. You're better off picking some other extra note. Now, there are other voicing rules, which I discuss in some of my other videos, but um, these ones will suffice for this video. And finally, to get really smooth voice leading, you want to move as few notes as possible, as little as possible, um, when transitioning between chords, all while adhering to those rules I just covered in terms of the available tensions you can use and the voicings, the notes you should have in your chord. So let's go through this and see a few examples. Now let's take a nice easy chord progression, a 2-5-1 in the key of C and play it using a five note spread voicing. So all our chords are gonna have five notes um, and they're gonna be spread out over two hands. So first chord is D minor seven. Let's play it using this voicing. So left hand plays D, C, right hand plays E, F, A. So that's the root, seventh, ninth, third, fifth. 
So all those notes are allowed over a minor chord. We've got the third and seventh, and we've got the root down the bottom. And we're not repeating any notes. Excellent. So how do we get to a G7 chord by moving as few notes as possible? So a G7 has a D, that's the fifth, and it's down the bottom, which is excellent. The G7 does not have a C. You're not allowed a C, that's your natural 11, so you're not allowed to play it. So we have to move this note here. And we can move it just one semitone down to the B, which is our third. The E's okay, that's the 13. The F's okay, that's the seven. And the A is okay, that's the nine. So then all we have to do to transition between the D minor 7 to the G7 is move our thumb on our left hand from the C down to the B. And if we have a look at the notes, it's the 5th, 3rd, 13th, um, 7th and 9th. All notes that are allowed over a G7 chord. Uh, we don't have the root, but that's okay. We know that the root is optional. We can omit it if we like. And we're not doubling any notes. So this should work well. So ha let's have a listen to that. Cool, so that sounds good. Final chord is the C major seven. So let's move our um, bottom note down to the C to get the root down the bottom. The B is okay, that's the seventh. The E is okay, that's the third. The F we're not allowed because that's a natural 11 and on major seven chords, we're only allowed sharp 11s. So let's do that. Let's move this note up a semitone to have a sharp 11. And the A is also okay, that's the um, 13th. So we've moved two notes, um, a small interval, so it's still gonna sound smooth. Um, we've got the root down the bottom, which is excellent. We've got the third and the seventh, which is good. And we're not repeating any notes and all these particular notes are now allowed over a C major seven chord. And so it sounds like this. So playing through that entire chord progression, it sounds as follows. smooth, nice and jazzy, nice bit of sort of crunchy dissonance at the end there with the um, sharp 11 in the voicing. And we followed all the rules, right? We're, we're only using available tensions, we include the third and the seventh, we do sometimes omit the root or the fifth, we've got the root or the fifth down the bottom, we're not doubling any notes, and we're connecting everything really, really smoothly. So as you can see, once you have your given chord progression, um, and you have your initial starting voicing, everything else from there is really formulaic. You just follow these rules and you can create a really nice, jazzy, smooth sounding chordal arrangement or series of voicings that sounds great by definition because they follow these rules, right? About the smooth voice leading and the available tensions. And it just kind of happens automatically. You don't really have to use too much creativity. Other than the first voicing, which you have to choose sort of in a vacuum, everything else just naturally flows on um, using those rules without too much thought. Yes, you have to figure out what you need to move, but it's very formulaic. You just follow a set of rules, you know, you can give it to a computer program and it'll do this for you, given your starting position, given your first chord voicing. So let's do another one. Let's take the same chord progression. This time, let's start with the following voicing. D, A in our left hand, C, F, G in our right hand. So again, all those notes check out. They're allowed over a minor seven chord. Now again, all we have to do to transition from the D minor to the G7 is move this C, which is not allowed in the G7, down a semitone to the B. And then everything else checks out. Uh, we're using all the right notes. We've got the third and the seventh in there. So it all ticks our rules. Now for the C major seven, again, we'll move the bass note down to the C to get our root. Um, and we're gonna have to do something about this F. All the other notes check out. This F doesn't fit because again, it's the natural 11. We could move it up to the F sharp again, but then if you have a look at the voicing, we don't have a third in there, and we know we have to have a third. We need to have the note E somewhere in the voicing. So instead, let's move this F down to an E. And that way, this voicing has the third and the seven included. 
So again, together it sounds as follows. Right, again, so nice and smooth, nice and jazzy. And again, other than the starting chord, the starting position, um, which is for the moment somewhat arbitrary, there are certain rules you should follow when creating a chord voicing, which I cover in my other video, but we're not discussing that here. So when you take the first chord voicing as given, everything else just flows naturally um, and kind of follows a predetermined path. Great, let's do one more. Um, this time in the left hand, let's do D, G, and right hand is C, F, A, which is a so what voicing for those of you who know what that is. So again, all we have to do here to get from the D minor to the G7 um, is move the C down a semitone to get that B again, and everything else fits, right? We've got the guide tones, all the other notes fit. And finally, um, we want to get to the C major 7, so again, we'll move our bass note down to the C. Again, we can't have that F, that's not allowed, and we don't have an E in our voicing so far, the third, so we move the F down to an E. Um, thus giving us the seventh and the third of the chord and everything else, all the other notes stay the same because they all fit, they all are av available tensions or chord tones of C major seven. Um, and so it sounds like this. And so again, that full chord progression one more time. the starting position, just following the rules without too much thinking or creativity required. Cool, and that's it. Thanks guys for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.